from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference, brought to you by Girls in Tech. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Girls in Tech Catalyst event. Really great event, about 700 people, a couple days, and it's just a single track, a lot of presentations, about 20 minute presentations by a bunch of female leaders telling their story. How do they get where they got? What advice could they give? And there's men, women here, that they just brought in, a, I think, a busload of students. So it's a really great event. We're excited to be here, and we're psyched for our next guest. She's Rashmi Kumar, the SVP Supply Chain and Procurement from McKesson, welcome. Hi, thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you said you hadn't been to this event before. You keep trying to come, but things don't, you know, keep getting in the way. So what do you think now that you're here? Absolutely, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so thankful to McKesson for being the lead sponsor of the event. Um, I'm really excited to see the energy here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so how did McKesson become the lead sponsor? Because that's a really nice statement on the company to really get involved in something like Girls in Tech. Yeah, so McKesson is a company which is sitting at the intersection of healthcare. Guess what, it's something on which our lives depend on. But this is the industry which is most behind in technology. So we want to do everything to grow technology talent um, across the country in this space to enable better healthcare for our patients. Right, and it's interesting, we talked before we turned the cameras on, that there, there's still a huge talent gap. You know, it's funny, because we go to a lot of shows and they talk about the machines are taking all the jobs and there's not going to be jobs for people, but in fact, there's still a ton of jobs, there's still a ton of opportunity in tech. We still don't have enough people, so we have to bring in women, we have to bring in other folks to help fill all these great opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we talk about machine and um, AI, we are not talking about pure AI taking away the job. It will be enabling human being to do better job and will improve our quality of life. So who will build those machines though? You need technologists. We need technologists who will build that machine and we are here to kind of grow ourselves and grow our people. Sitting where I am at a SVP of supply chain role, all the commerce is moving from a storefront to e-commerce. That is run by programs and technologies and there are jobs in warehouses for people to enable the e-commerce, but how do we build those platforms that right. will enable our patients to get, say, their medication at their doorsteps and not have to go run from pharmacy to pharmacy to right. find it. And we need technologists for it. Right? So it's interesting because supply chains have been automized for a long time and you know, early days of, of tech innovation where it was ERP and SAP. So you know, what lessons can you tell from procurement that now we see in more kind of customer facing and direct to, to consumer tech involvement? Because you still have people, you yeah. still, you know, there's a lot of automation in, yeah. in procurement, but you still have a lot of things for people to do. Yeah, so as the supply chain was more business to business, we were focused on the customer experience of a, say, pharmacist, or the, or the experience of a person who was working on the warehouse floor. And we didn't worry about it. The gray screens, green screens, whatever we put, now you think about an autonomous car or you think about a drone delivering uh, medicine, you need to give the interaction to every person uh, which enables them to consume those services. And this whole field of human computer interaction is new. Yeah. When machines will run the cars uh, and we don't have to drive it, how I interact with it, somebody needs to define it and then tweak it and grow it. That's also another point about all technology and digital product. Right. You can pivot and change and bring in new functionality, satisfy human consumerization of technology is changing human needs to interact with technology as well. And we need all kinds of people from all backgrounds because diversity brings in diverse thinking, which brings in better products. Yeah, it does. It's not only the right thing to do, but it actually delivers much better results of course. and bottom line. So yeah. you're here, you're running a workshop today. So tell us a little bit about the workshop that you're running. Yeah, so the workshop, um, my topic is make your pitch perfect. Um, which is around the old topic of elevator pitch. Um, but because it's Girls in Tech Conference, um, we women want to be 200% sure that we are good to do a job and we don't kind of branch out to highlight the work that we are doing already, right, right. which could get us in that next position. So how as a professional we should interact with not only our managers and peers, but other leaders within the company, maybe other leaders across my industry, as well as in technology, and impress them with what I can do so that we leave a lasting impression on the person's mind. And when he or she is looking for a role, uh, for a person for a role, they think of right. the girls who are here training um, 
these two days. So right. This so, is just kind of icing on the cake. Let's so what are some way. of the tips and tricks for the people that didn't make the conference that, that you helped them with? Are, are there some, you know, kind of common errors that people make over and over and over that you're trying to tell them not to do? Or are there a couple little, little, little guideposts that you can help them to get their pitch down? Is it the timing? Is it the focus? Is it the way it's structured? What are some of the things you share with them? Absolutely. So HBR did an article on um, elevator pitch for elevator pitch. So th that, <laughs> that, means, that, <laughs> that means that we leave a lot of interactions on the table because when we are riding an elevator, riding a train, or just sitting at a bar, we don't take the opportunity to open up that conversation. So we'll be focusing on that a little bit. And then also talking about, as you define your elevator pitch, think about your own passion, your own skill, and where does it fit with some companies or some projects need? At that intersection lies the sweet spot for, right. that, for that person and how they hone in, how they really practice it and have it handy and available um, to say it when the time comes, right? right? So that's the main kind of gist of the uh, workshop. Well, it's an interesting concept too because we go to a lot of conferences and you know one of the great values of conferences if you're if, if you're exhibiting is you get to practice your pitch with a whole bunch of people right. over a really short period of time and hone it. So it's a interesting concept to take advantage of those opportunities maybe if they're not even great ones, but just to get the reps in, just to yeah. see what resonates, what do people listen to, what do they grab. Right, so they will do a practice. Here. Right, right. Think about what's their skill, what they're passionate about and what what is the place where they want to go need and, right. and see the intersection. And maybe the places they're thinking of might not fit their passion and skill, Right. but they're just enamored with that place. So it also kind of gives them some toolbox to think ahead of time right. around how to plan their careers. All right, well, important work. And uh, again, thank you for your sponsorship of the conference. It's really important and it's a great, uh, great statement on McKesson. Thank you. All right, she's Rashmi, I'm Jeff. We are at Girls in Tech Catalyst 2018, downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.